We're having a, what we call rapid intervention training for our firefighters today. Uh, we've been doing this for a few weeks. We've been lucky enough to have this acquired structure here on Pleasant Street uh, to be able to run these scenarios in a real time, uh, real you know, building situation as opposed to our training facility. In this particular case, uh, we simulate that a fire is occurring and one of our firefighters goes down uh, with an injury and our what we call rapid intervention crew, uh, which is a specialized crew of firefighters in the event that a firefighter gets in trouble, uh, to be able to rapidly run, get in there and uh, either uh, extricate the firefighter, put them on air, do whatever needs to be done to get that firefighter out. Uh, they're separate from the fire ground operations, they're just standing by ready to go. At a certain point, firefighter calls a mayday, mayday is called, certain protocols go into effect with the chiefs on the scene, uh, we get more resources to the scene, our fire crews uh, go into uh, a search mode for our firefighter uh, and uh, they go to work and extricate him. Uh, at the same time, the crews also have to continue to fight the fire. Our best defense and our best way to uh, assure our firefighter is safe is to put the fire out. So uh, it's a complex uh, arrangement between the chiefs and the crews on the scene to make sure that we're multitasking. When we do the training tower fires, we get the heat and we get the smoke, but you don't get the complexity of the interior of a real structure. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, obviously our training tower is something we are very familiar with, so we can change it up a little bit, but you know, after a while it's the same, you know, it's kind of the same scenario over and over again. Uh, so in that particular case, you get the heat and you get the fire, uh, but you don't get the complexity of what's going on. Here we don't, we don't use any live fire, uh, but we do use simulated theater smoke, uh, so our visibility is about the same as it would be in any other fire, so we're down to about 0% visibility. Our thermal imaging cameras are, uh, are truly uh, a great resource for us. Um, it allows us to be able to see in places that we never were able to see before. Uh, thermal imaging's been around for probably about 15 or 20 years. It's been uh, converted into a tool for us in the fire service. Every year they get better, they get efficient, they get smaller, uh, portable. So uh, those thermal imaging cameras, we were able to see um, gradients of heat within, within a room. Uh, so if we have a firefighter down and we look through the smoke, so to speak, it allows us to look through the smoke and, and see the, the different gradients of heat. And certainly a firefighter lying on the ground or a civilian lying on a bed uh, will project a different heat register and uh, we'll be able to see the outline. It gives us a, a, a quicker uh, reaction to the, to the room. Uh, obviously, you scan the room with your thermal imaging camera uh, and you can eliminate certain portions of the room which allows us to be faster in what we're doing. Being out in the street and charging hose lines and getting orders over the radio like we, we did today uh, really uh, enhances the sense of urgency uh, and puts a, little, you know, puts a little stress on our firefighters so that they uh, you have to work under those kinds of conditions. So it's as close as we can get uh, without actually burning the place down. We've been lucky enough to have this uh, structure, as I said, for a few weeks now. Uh, this is one of our last days to be able to work on it. It's going to be, uh, unfortunately, tearing it down in a couple of uh, few days from now. Uh, but uh, we're very grateful to uh, uh, Sam Rosario for allowing us to be able to uh, have this structure and to be able to conduct these drills.